Alrighty. Welcome back to The Devil's Part Timer Anime Review, episode number 18. Yep, 18. Here are the episodes 33 and 34 of The Devil's Part Timer. Yes. And these episodes that from book 9 for the series, which means, yes. Next episode will be discussed, the last episode officially air for the series. And I'll begin with those really soon. Right now, I've started basically reading a Mashuku Tensai, Jabba's Incarnation, book 24. Now, once the book is finished, I will read book, 20, book 10 and then finally finish the season up. What happens in the course of these two episodes? Well, my, of course, arranges to have time off of work. So, he talks to his, briefly to his boss. And, of course, see, everybody meet up his work, discussing basically the plan. And, of course, uh, Sario basically is like... He was even asked to go back to ETC. He's like, nah, he found him with a particular weapon, so basically he was left alone. Oh, maybe it'll be because he can be with, with his guy as a beauty. Mao's boss. Yep. I love this stuff. It's really good. And then, of course, apparently that Susan, uh, Christabel decided to buy mopeds. Yep, mopeds. If you're curious, this is why I've heard of very common transportation in Japan because basically Japan is a bit of a country. Yep, so then they arrive at a particular gate where I think it's Lucifer and sorry, I basically proceed to open the gate and then you have uh, Mao and Bell go in with with Alice Rama's sister and that's their part before I get to what happens next with them. Uh, well, actually, I'll continue with it. Basically, with them, uh, they arrive in into Isla where they run into... Uh, the guy who's voiced by Christopher Sabbath, and in, in the, it's the first time he's appeared in the, se in the series since, like, season one for the show. Yep. So they run into him because they hear about a rumor, like, oh, there's these strange steel horses, which apparently, Mal calls them turbocharged original, uh, Durhan the Third. The reason why? Because they are the Earth Demon. Yep. And... Of course, also in Sorp, apparently when he transmitted so apparently his body is not accepted because he is a vomiting. And, and of course, the second episode is called Devil Vomits, which, by the way, this is kind of how Book 9 ended. Yes, seriously. And we're not done yet. It seems as though so far, one thing I could tell for these episodes, it seems like it's a very continuous story going spread over the course of just a few books. And this is only just Book 9. Yes. It's kind of started with the story that you have to from Book 7. That's where it started. And we continue here. And that's it for Mao. In the case of Emmy, where she actually with uh, we we see here when she first arrives into Isla with her friend voiced by Monica Rail, where they arrive, of course they separate, of course she's she's seen it briefly afterwards, where apparently she's put on trial by the church for fake crimes, from what I can tell. Yes. So she arrives in her hometown. There's like nobody there. She, she apparently finds her house. Of course, first they go to their town. They say, of course, the food is nasty. Alice, I'm like, no, this thing is terrible. We see her basically walking around. And, well, they arrive at the place. And that's where, where her mom is. Which, actually, this is from the book. And her mama is Emmy's mom. Larry. Yeah, but then she has to leave because Oba shows up. Yes, this jerkwad who's been proclaiming war hero despite the fact this guy is an actual criminal. He's a war criminal, and yet he's a proclaimed a war hero. Does this make any sense to give all the crimes he committed back in Japan? Or the fact this guy is basically the biggest a-hole in the whole series? You could officially say this guy could be the main bad guy of the whole entire franchise. Because of how, how dick, of, dick of a guy is. So he brings to the capital, of course, spend the night there. Alice almost nothing happened. Basically, this whole portion of this, this is basically taking place before we first hear in just episode, uh, I think it was uh, 32, before we see before we see at all in 32. This basically fills in that gap. Yes, that's basically what happened with this. And then, of course, basically, we see her going to, like, doing some battling. And at one point, because she's commander-in-chief, she can't go into battle, but... She wants, she wants, like, Oba's like, oh, let's massacre demons. And he's like, no, that's not exactly a good idea. Why don't I just basically just, just have them surrender? They don't have to massacre them. I, I actually agree with her on that part. 
yeah, the whole massacre thing is completely just nonsense. It's it's a waste of resources to try and massacre a whole species of people. As for Ario, he basically is back to his general form, or apparently he's unhappy with apparently these two demons disobeying their king. He bravely chats him and goes see, of course, Emmy's mom, and he's seen very briefly over the course of these couple episodes. He's he actually has a little bit of screen time, not a lot. And in the case of Emmy, where her thing ends basically because there's nothing with demons, her part is like half the screen time of basically her her story takes up like half the time of the course of the episode episode with Mao. I would say Arya's stuff is like about five percent of it per se. It's basically for him, he talks to Gabriel, talks to demons, walks, that's it. Yeah, over the course of just a couple episodes, his screen time over the course of these two episodes is roughly five minutes. No, seriously, it's like five minutes. He has basically very little screen time over the course of this episode. I would say, well, Emmy and Mao basically equal screen time. Chie is, well, she's not in the story basically at this point, uh, right after the first part, basically, because it's all... Most into Isla, which is the first time Mao has been there since the pilot episode, which basically was, well, in the book terms, excuse me, this first time he's been there since book one for this series. Yep. And of course, basically, he does ask Alice and Alma's sister basically how long she's been in the real world living with uh, Emmy's, Emmy's dad. He said for a year, because she's one year old, one year old, despite the fact she looks older than that. And even Mal questions how the heck she could be the younger sister, even though that Alice Ramos is the younger, it looks like, the appearance-wise, is the younger one. Yeah, this does not make any sense at all. Even he basically points this out. But that series nutshell for you. Yep. Uh, but overall, really two good episodes, and, well, we're just about done here. With this particular season, and soon I'll be back to Book Henger. Very, very soon. I'd say probably in the next couple days, given the fact that I've got unexpected time off, which I wasn't really wanting. I wanted to work, but no, I got time off. I did not want that at all. So, do I think presumably tomorrow I might get to the book, the next episodes? I don't think so, but I'm going to end it here and basically just do my comic corner. And then, well, do 100 Girlfriends and then do another comic corner. And that'll probably be it for the evening, okay? Thanks for you. Bye-bye.